Most of us learned about the landmark Supreme Court case, Brown v. Board of Education, in school, the case that desegregated schools across the United States. But have you heard of the Webb family of Miriam, Kansas? They've paved the way to desegregation by winning their own Kansas State Supreme Court case. Let's take it all the way back to 1947, seven years before Brown versus Board, to get the full story. The Walker School was in terrible condition. It was in such poor condition that it's hard to believe that school children were being asked to attend that. That was black school children. And then you have the South Park School that is brand new and in great shape, of course, and that's for white students only. And they were thinking our tax money also, the building this school for the white children. Is everybody's money being used? Why couldn't they all go to the same school? Despite the fact, like she said, they were paying taxes and the school was built right there in the community, in the neighborhood where they lived. Bottom line was they said, okay, all you black kids stay down here and this is for the white kids. None of my father's children were allowed to attend the new South Park grade school. My dad said, white kids would walk by Walker School to attend South Park. They gerrymandered it down alleys and streets, you know, just to make sure they created a circle within a circle to keep them out. It was strictly based on a racist philosophy of segregated schools. My dad and my mom, they knew, look, we're not getting the same thing. And they weren't asking originally to attend the new school. They were asking for improvements at Walker School. And after they made their request, they were completely ignored. And so they went back to another meeting, but they went with a lawyer. That's when they started getting attention and respect. Alfonso Webb was the first leader of the Miriam NAACP. So this was a very committed man, and his wife was very committed. Uh, the Webb family and others organized and decided to organize a walkout and led the effort then to integrate the new school. He had the support of all the families. He had the aid of the NAACP and good lawyers, but it was still scary. My father and the other community members were willing to put their lives on the line. And I'm so proud that they had the strength and the courage. They were being threatened by the Ku Klux Klan. The Webb family faced enormous challenges because they were advocates for equal rights for all children. Their home was actually set on fire in an act of arson. During that time, when we were still there, there I remember, I just happened to be in the kitchen looking out the back window. And somebody had started a fire right in the back porch. And Alfonso Webb just decided in an even stronger way to speak out and to continue and ultimately to be one of the named plaintiffs along with his wife in the lawsuit. They exhibited enormous courage and they didn't back down and that's why the case went to court and ultimately the Kansas Supreme Court ruled that under state law, segregated schools like this were illegal. And then that led to the litigation out of Topeka that led to the United States Supreme Court case in, in Brown versus Board of Education in 1954 that outlawed segregation of the United States Constitution. Even though we know about Brown versus Board of Education all around, people don't know that uh, those roots came from right here in Maryland. This is a story that people need to know, and they need to know it in this community. That's the reason it was important to name the meeting room after the family. Instantly, when someone walks in that room, their eyes light up. That idea of family and roots, it's a way to draw you into the story and to the family and make you curious. We still live in the community of South Park. So we're thankful that even through the battles and the hard times that our parents had to face, we're happy that they faced it in this community that we still live in and we still love. I wish we were all together, all 10 of us, with our parents right now, so they can all get the recognition they deserve. 
equal access is critical. It doesn't matter whether it's books or magazines or computers. It's very consistent with intellectual freedom principles that are, form the foundation of the Johnson County Library. That's what the library can do is elevate that story or at least put it on the shelf. I think my hope is that the Webb family's story, one, gets spread more and further and, you know, never stops. And I also hope that over time, maybe it inspires people to talk about other stories in this community that we don't know. You don't always know something's going to be historic. You're just doing the right thing. They did leave a mark. And I like the fact that they are being recognized for taking that step. You know, if they could see all these things that have come about as a result of the work they did, they would be proud. And it will make our grandkids and our kids feel good because they want to be informed. And we still celebrate that with my parents, grandkids, great-grandkids. We celebrate being a web. <laughs> Learn more about the Webb family story at the Merriam Plaza Library.